Welcome to the Silverthorne Pulse. I'm Kim Jardim with the town of Silverthorne and I'm here today with Assistant Town Manager Mark Lydell. Thanks for being here, Mark. Thanks for having me. We are here to recap the January 25th, 2023 Town Council meeting and work session as well. So let's jump in to the work session and we had an item uh, for discussion which was the draft policy for remote council meeting participation, which we actually talked about the last time we were here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that's about and uh, where we stand with that policy. Well, I think the town council has had a lot of discussion about the, the meetings that they hold and they want to make sure that those meetings are in person. Uh, even though we're in a, a virtual society now and having hybrid types of meetings, I think our town council has indicated that you don't get that full effect of, of having a, a meeting um, with people either on phone or online or on camera. So I think this policy is where we've said that we, if we're going to be having virtual types of meetings, uh, that we would want them for emergency purposes only. Um, and for, for example, I think we want it to be for the benefit of the, the entirety of the community as opposed to for an, an individual. We don't want one individual to, to be able to uh, call in or use a Zoom link uh, to be able to come into the meeting. So that's where I think council has wanted to establish a policy, which is to say we're going to have meetings uh, in person um, most of the time. If we do need it for an emergency, we can, we can have a virtual type of meeting. Sure, that's great. That makes sense. I mean, certainly if we're in a, a crisis situation and we've got council member or two that is out of town, you know, that's certainly a, an entirely different scenario than just regular scheduled meetings. Sure, and, and a lot of it also has to do with uh, the fact that our town council does see a lot of land use applications, so they're in the quasi-judicial format. Uh, so making sure that they can read the entire room, you know, acting as judges, everybody needs to hear that input. So I think council really took that to heart and said, if we're going to do this, uh, we, we want to make sure that people are all available and inside that room. So does that, because that's a draft policy, is there still another step where that will be passed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we will take this to town council as a resolution and then it will be a policy that they will be formal policy. Great. Excellent. Well, jumping right into town council meeting, since uh, that was a brief wor work session item, um, we have uh, third street parking plans um, between Brian and Adams. There's some on street parking planned. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, this is one of our capital improvement projects that, that we've wanted to do as we're seeing the downtown expand and grow. Um, we're, we're taking third street, uh, which is between Brian and Adams and adding uh, quite a few parking spaces. The, the, we have additional right-of-way in that area. So as we're seeing more <clears throat> pedestrians in the, in the downtown, uh, we want to add curb, gutter, sidewalk, and I think we can add uh, 20, 25 parking spaces in that, that third street area. So that'll be a benefit for uh, the public who are trying to access a lot of the downtown businesses. And never any overnight parking in town, correct? So that's just day use and early evening parking. Correct, but I think we're seeing more and more on-street parking need, so this is another way that we can accommodate some additional parking in the downtown. Moving on to the consent calendar, um, we've got Angler Mountain Vista's second amendment. Um, talk a little bit about that, if you will. Yeah, Angler Mountain Vistas uh, is a new project that is uh, up near the substation at the very top of Angler Mountain Ranch. Uh, so this uh, plat, uh, replat, is creating six additional lots that would be available for sale. Um, actually, the, the houses are for sale also. So uh, this right, replat is, is pretty, pretty easy, pretty routine, and, and this uh, allows for uh, the land to be transferred uh, to the individual buyer. In the public hearings portion of the meeting, we had Ordinance 2023-01, which was an ordinance authorizing the town manager to execute a contract for the town's sale of a property on Polar Court. And it's my understanding this was a buy-down uh, transaction where the town purchased a property, um, put a deed restriction on it, and then resold it at a lesser price to a local that's within the workforce. Yep, absolutely. I think that's this is our first buy-down that we were able to do, uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, but the deed restriction <clears throat> does mean that it has to be sold to somebody that is in the workforce. Uh, so we were excited to be able to make that, make that transaction happen. 
we had a really uh, nice note that was shared with council last night and will be shared with town staff from that family who are absolutely thrilled for this closing on Friday. Uh, they've been living in a much smaller um, condominium uh, with three teenage children and uh, they just couldn't be happier. So it was really great to see their message to council and, and how appreciative they are that council took on that, that project. Yeah, and we also will be looking for additional buy-down opportunities uh, like other communities have done uh, to be able to preserve some units for the workforce. Uh, second public hearing item was resolution 2023-05, which was approving a minor subdivision and final site plan for Azure Landing, which is formerly the Parkway Place South. We're in the, the final stages of, of this uh, approval. Uh, this was actually going to be continued. The public hearing is continued to the next town council meeting. Um, but yeah, Azure Landing is a, a multi-unit project um, and we're, we should see the final uh, approvals coming forward here at the next meeting. Excellent. Great. Uh, it was a pretty brief council meeting. Uh, so those were all of the items that we've actually covered already. I'd like to uh, address a few other items, just some Silverthorne Town news uh, for some upcoming events. We've got the Brewers Rock for Rescue on January 28th at the Pavilion. It's an annual event that's always held there. It's a fundraiser for the Summit County Rescue Group, always a popular one. Uh, there's 20 vendors uh, with um, beer tastings, liquor tastings, wine tastings, uh, there's live music. Um, so more information about that on our website for sure. We've also got First Friday coming up. Seems to roll around every month, the first Friday of every month. Um, so this uh, First Friday is February 3rd. That will be uh, the Wish Lantern event that celebrates um, the uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, and so there's also live music, um, there's even salsa lessons inside the pavilion uh, because there's a, um, a component uh, um, of the Mexican heritage at that time of year as well that we're celebrating also. So, um, so we've got that. And then, of course, every year on Valentine's Day, we've got Valentine's Comedy Night. And so that's always a fun one at the pavilion as well. And also, I just want to uh, alert everyone, all those businesses out there, we've got the business grant program uh, for 2023. The applications are open currently at this time, but they do close on February 24th. So um, again, information on our website at silverthorn.org. And we've also got a public art grant program um, whose applications are open at this time as well. And those will be closing on March 17th. So. Uh, that is it for us for today. We'll see you next time uh, when we discuss the February council meeting. Thanks for joining us.